Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Paddle Talk. Don't forget you can look at all of our episodes on YouTube by searching up the World Sand Drug News YouTube page, or check us out on Spotify by searching Paddle Talk. We're episode 16 today. Um, lots of cool stuff going on in the world uh, of sand drags. Um, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Check us out on our Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok. Visit us on the website, worldsanddragnews.com, where you can get all of our past results uh, for different races, our world records, schedule events, and much, much more. Don't forget to also buy our sponsors stuff. Speaking of sponsors, joined right now by Isaac DeHaan and Damian Bowers. Isaac's got an ad read for us. That's right, folks. Coming to you all the way from the Northwoods of Wisconsin, it is racing in the dirt. Scott and Shane Orogi and the crew over there, everything from turnkey cars to components to wheels to paddle tires and cut tires available through Racing in the Dirt. You can call, email, or even text them and get a hold of them. Find them on Facebook, Racing in the Dirt, and get a hold of them. Season is almost upon us, and they are ready to help you get ready to make your first race. So no matter where you are, they ship daily UPS, so racinginthedirt.com. And thanks to them for coming on board as a sponsor for Paddle Talk. Absolutely. Thank you guys again. As uh, promised, uh, we're going to give you guys some race results from some of the cool events we spoke about last episode on Paddle Talk. Um, so starting it out, we're going to go over to the Monson Hill Climb in Massachusetts. We have uh, start with their hill drag portion of the event, kicking off with the factory stock four to six cylinder class. In first place is going to be Zale Ledwith, and second place, Eric Burgess. Moving on over to the factory stock eight cylinder. First place going to go to Skylar Bascom. At second place, going to Kelly Marshall. The modified class has John Rivers taking the first place position and David Charnick taking second. Moving on to their experimental A uh, classes, some of the cool classes that uh, Mark Crossway was talking about. His Jeep running in there, he actually took first place in Experimental A, and David Charnick taking second place in Experimental A. Experimental B, we have in first place Dwayne Pamufi, and second place going to Brian Pyers. The big uh, shots on the hill for the hill drags, the unlimited class. We're moving into the unlimited classes here. Dwayne Pamufi also taking first place in the unlimited class. And second place going to Jim Vincic. The Super Unlimited. Now, this was super cool. We were talking about, hey, you guys should go and check out this race. We had a sand drag um, frequent uh, here with Larry Monig going over there with the Infidel Injected Alcohol Altered, taking first place on the hill drags for the Super Unlimited class, beating out Brian Pyers in second place. So that was the first portion of their event. They do the hill drags, and then they've got the over-the-top class, the the head honcho. We were looking at videos again. We were just before here. Isaac was talking about, man, this thing looks sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> it does, man. It's crazy. I can't – I am just amazed. But, hey, what would you expect with a place that's got classes called experimental A and B. I mean, that just opens the door up to some weird stuff happening there already, right? Definitely look at the old school of class racing. For Very sure. much so. So they're over the top class. This is the one where they actually go up two more tiers on this hill. Um, they've got little plateaus, and the fast guys are jumping these plateaus. They have two different classes for the over-the-top. They basically have a non-nitrous and a nitrous class. So in the non-nitrous class, um, blowing the competition away in first place, Dwayne Pamufi getting a best run for the first place position of 8.91 seconds. Completely insane there. Mark Crossway, again, we spoke with him about this event. He took second in the over-the-top on one of his Sunday drives over the top of the hill. His best time, a 10.307. So, Dwayne, over a second uh, over Mark there. Um, I don't know. I, 
didn't get the chance to see any uh, videos from it, but man, that is quite a spread there. Now, just to correct you there, I think you're mispronouncing the name. You're putting the M before the F there. Pafumi, you're right. I apologize. <laughs> Dwayne Pafumi. Also, um, I just put in the group chat a picture of his rig. He runs that wagon I mentioned in the previous episode when we were talking to Mark. Oh! That definitely one of the coolest cars that's out there, for sure. And if you definitely want to look at seeing just, and Mark mentioned it, there's not a lot of onboard footage, but if you go to the Infidel Racing's Facebook page, he posted a couple of his hill drag runs from his GoPro, and when he would crest the top of that hill drags, all you see is just a wall, and that is crazy to see. He, he had mentioned he was definitely not running it near as hard as the other guys in those classes, but then again, the yeah, Infidel's a car with a, with a rigid front end. That's kind of hard to jump a car like that and not hurt mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, right? So speaking of which, uh, Larry actually competed in the nitrous class, obviously, with the, the nitrous mm -hmm. alcohol injected altered. Um, he took third. So we'll, we got three uh, competitors here for the nitrous class. Um, his best time was 15.137 at the over-the-top class. Um, second place, Kyle Goldsnyder with a 10.677. And then taking first place in the nitrous category, Mark Crossway running his naturally aspirated Ford Power Jeep. His best time, 10.238. So a little bit better on his uh, performance on the nitrous class versus the non-nitrous. Still pretty crazy to see Dwayne uh, Pufumi uh, getting uh, over a second over the whole competition for both uh, the nitrous and non-nitrous classes. So he took that bonus for the the fastest over the top. Right. That's crazy. That is nuts. Damien, you've got some results as well from the Lee County uh, race, the fastest of the fast we spoke to. Um, that was all uh, fast track racing as well as the hill and hole stuff. So go through some race results for that um, if you could. Oh, definitely. And it was a... Uh... They had a good number of cars show up. They, from what I heard, 70 entries on Friday night, 50 entries on Saturday, which is a lot less classes, but a lot higher tier competition. Friday night started off, we're going to start off with a small tire modified, which is a 35 and under street tire class. Unaltered DOT tires, sort of like our pure street class, but they're allowed to do just about anything with the car. First and second were both by a team of drivers in the same car the mud wiser jeep um eli wood second place with a 6.349 and his teammate weston wiseman with a 5.971 then we'll go into big tire modified so basically the same rules but 35 and above dot tires then you have in second billy stevens in daphne a yellow Ford Ranger, really famous from the back channel videos of its huge nitrous backfire, looking kind of like a blowtorch coming out the hood. And then Trey G Gugino, Gugino, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but he was driving a truck called No Problem 3 and ran a 4.666 in that hill and hole pit to take the win in that class. Then we'll go to Hot Street, another class I'm not fully sure on the rules but i know they're they have to run unaltered dot approved tires again second place is ralph hankins with diablo running a 4.938 and richard lombardi lombardi with the renegade jeep a blue jeep scrambler amc power nitrous leaf springs all the way around he ran a 4.459 also friday night we had the blower cuts class, which they opened that up to anybody that wants to run that with cut tires. And winner there, or well, second place, Dale Ellenberger with the A Touch of Madness ran a 1.933 on a 160-foot track on cut tires. Wow. And the winner, William Billy Ellis in Billy Fling's reality check out of Dayton, Ohio. Ran a one, they only ran one pass on Friday night and they ran a 1.854. Six, that's foot that is a that's I've a seen that car run. Time. Holy crap! 
Yeah, and that was Friday night. Then we move on to Saturday. We'll start with the blower paddles class, which is blown alcohol. Mat- or well, we'll start with the nitrous class, actually. We'll work our way towards the end here. But there we go. the nitrous class, your usual suspects you'd see at MRA, shoot the thrill, second rate, self-inflicted, the yellow Jeep that Richard Dunavant out of what out of Virginia, um, the magician. But it all came down to Jason Massey in second rate getting second with a 1.958. And this is a nitrous car on paddle tires. Yeah. And Keith Mitchell with his Sonny Leonard powered magician. 950 plus cubic inch nitrous car. 1.920. And the top three are all under the two second barrier and the 160 foot there. Wow, and these, that's these are cars with no blowers. And this is for the fast track, correct? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot yeah. to mention this. Just like the blown cut tires class the night before, this is fast track. You see, like I said, you see a lot of the normal suspects. You'll see some others in there that, like I said, some of them kind of getting a feel for what's coming this year or just there to say, hey, I was there. Which, if it wasn't such a far drive, I would have been there just to be there. For sure. Then we'll go to the blower. Blown Alcohol Madness. Last year's winner, I believe, was Paul Wessinger. He ended up third with a 183. Travis Shoemaker, they just switched this card from a nitrous car to a blower car late last year, went a 1803. And after the end of the track, apparently the front suspension on the right side collapsed and somehow took out a GoPro lens. Oh, wow. Not something you see too we'll often. To, we'll have to throw in a, a photo here of that uh, pretty pretty wild aftermath there. And then team taking the win, doubling up in blower paddles and blown t- cut tires, Billy Fling in reality track, running a 1.769. 1. 1.769 and 160 foot? That's, that's crazy. Uh, that's a, that's comparable to what this thing sixty foot's on motor. <laughs> that's insane. And I mean, and you know, it is a fast track, but it is typically a little bit heavier than what we usually see for some right. sand races. It'd be similar to what you would see out in Missouri at Thunder Valley, Brookville, something like that. It's a clay based track, especially being down there in North Carolina. It's probably a real heavy red clay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but like a one, anything in the one sixes, one sevens, even the one eights, one nines you're talking about, anything sub twos and 160 foot, converting that to a 300 foot time, we're talking easily top eliminator times there. Oh, if yeah. If not I, approaching to top alcohol. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because you got to think these guys are running similar combinations to what's in the April's Dream Dragster or, um, God dang it, the Chris Minor Jeep. And then they're running it so much harder because they've, they're have they only making two to four passes in an entire weekend. Yeah. And then carrying a 2,000-pound four-wheel drive car to that pace. Completely wild. And then the real... Selling point for this weekend was the unlimited class in the hill and hole. Anything goes 250 foot hill and hole pit. You, you got a lot of names here from over the years of this event, but it all came down to second place. Well, actually, at this event, the magic barrier for the last 10 years for this event has been sub four seconds for it. There was only a certain number of people, I don't know the exact number. The track record going into it was a 364 or 367 by Daryl Jones, who's the namesake of the event, the creator. Rest in peace to him. But you had one, two, three, four, five different cars run sub four seconds in that hill and hole pit. Sheesh. And just to be nice here, I'll mention all those. Dre Gugino with the No Problem 3, who had won the previous night in one of the in the big tire modified class. He got fifth with a 3.956. 
Chad Sexton in a car, I love the name here, Lacking Insanity, running a 3-9 <laughs> flat. Larry Corbriel in the Outcast ran a 3.831. Robert Gallagher running a Pat Musi engine, big nitrous motor and a yellow square body. First pass DQ'd, the car named The Rabbit Hunter. His second pass, he went a 3.740. And early on in the first round of the first session, and I don't know exactly how deep into the session he was, Denny Curley, family famous for running the Snoop cars in NMRO days, record holders back then, their rowdy Snoop truck, a blown Hemi Dodge Dakota, went a 3.493. Whoa. Zane. If you go to Back Channel Productions, friends of ours, Nick Davis, he actually has a video on YouTube of that run right now. And Car damn near just skips the last part of the pit landing on the hard pack. Wow. Hmm. Crazy. Man, broke the broke the track record by nearly two. Broke tenths. the world record too for that style of pit. Wild, definitely, and like I said, it, it was a huge event for them, and they had so many different cars there. And I always love the different styles of cars that show up to that because everyone's got a different mouse trap. I I love that they all name their cars. Oh, you totally! Know? Like go down the list, some of the ones like Rowdy Snoot, Lacking Insanity, Slew Foot. Back and black, yellow jacket, mud visor, and the list goes on. Yeah, no, super cool stuff. Well, um, before we get into our next event, we're going to talk about the full size madness hidden in Little Sandy Raceway this coming weekend. We're going to go actually jump over to an interview with uh, one of the track owners, Alyssa. Um, Dave Applegate also joined us for that interview. We're going to go and talk with her a little bit about. The history of Little Sandy Raceway, her and her husband, Devin, kind of taking over the track, um, what they do for Little Sandy Raceway, and a little bit of a preview for some of the things that they've got coming up for the 2024 season. We'll jump over there. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some very special guests on with us today. Joining uh, with Dave and myself, we have Alyssa, and Devin is in the background there somewhere, the owners of Little Sandy Raceway. Uh, Alyssa, you guys just recently, well, fairly recently purchased the Little Sandy Raceway track. Um, We wanted to kind of just go over um, a little bit about your guys' story, um, how you guys found out about Little Sandy Raceway. Maybe you could tell us a little bit of the history of the track and kind of what led up to you guys purchasing it. Yeah. So um, we purchased it in August of 2022. Um, And this, this is the story I tell everybody about how we ended up buying it. So my husband actually raced there. Um, that season and he put nitrous on his x3 well he was going down the track nitrous blew his car up and then the track came up for sale months later and he bought it didn't fix his x3 just bought the track so i have no racing experience i had never been there and he just said hey i want to buy this racetrack so i said okay let's go with it so i work in public health so does it really make any sense for me to be involved with the racetrack but believe it or not it has quite a bit to do with it um definitely been an adventure for sure last year we got rained out for two and a half months out of the year so it really put a damper on things but um we're really excited for this year it looks like we're going to have a really beautiful weekend for full-size madness and we're really excited to get to see everybody again for the year and uh, get things started so the track opened up in 1996 which coincidentally is the year I was born. So the track is as old as I am. Um, so it's been there for a really long time. Uh, we bought it a couple of years ago, and we're really excited to see where it takes us. Well, you said 1996. Was that correct? Yeah. All right. So that everyone knows, today is Alyssa's birthday. So happy it birthday, is. Alyssa. Happy birthday, Alyssa. Thank you, guys. So you, uh, so 96, 96 is when it opened, um, and you guys have had it a year and a half. Is that right? It'll be two years two in years. August. Two years, two years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that counts because we really didn't get to do a whole lot. 
<laughs> Sometimes Mother Nature works that way, huh? It didn't lock us last year, no. <laughs> well, we're hoping for a good birthday weekend with the full size madness coming to town. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that that event in particular? Because that's a little bit different than you guys have done as far as like your typical races, right? Right. So full size madness is literally everybody. We're wanting everybody to come out. So bikes, laydowns. Uh, side by size we want trucks out we want street trucks anybody who wants to come race we want them to come race so obviously we're not going to race our atvs with our trucks you know because that's dangerous so they're going to have their own classes um S spdrs is um putting up some sponsorship money and little sandy's putting up some more sponsor money um that way there's no entry fees for the king of little sandy race and the quick eight race which of course they're going to be smaller um, we'll have bracket races too, but these smaller races are no entry fee, just 100% payout and um, just something different. We're trying to get something different coming. Um, that way we can bring in some more spectators, hopefully keep the sport alive and just really get to enjoy it. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and so with the uh, King of Little Sandy, um, it will be the, so the trucks and side sides if I remember correctly, Alyssa, are going to run together. The side sides if they want to jump in the ATV part of it, they can if they like. But only trucks and side sides together, at, 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 you know, throughout the the uh, the event. But there's going to be actually, two classes, right? Well, For, actually, we side sides would only be in the full size class. Okay. Okay. All right. So, and then there's going to be a slower class and a faster bracket, right? Yes. In the so trucks, called pro and bracket. So pro is going to be the 449 and faster, and the uh, bracket's going to be the 450 and slower. Okay, so the winner of the two brackets in the ATV side and in the truck side, truck side side side. Boy, that's hard to say. <laughs> those two will run. It, the winner of each will run one time for the king of Little Sandy, right? And each one. And then that's where the sponsorship, you know, the money that I'm putting in and the money that you guys are putting in will go to them and no entry fee. Yeah. And if I remember right, didn't we talk about uh, on the driver's meeting for it, if the guys want to throw extra 10 bucks in or 20 bucks, whatever they want to do, they're more than welcome to do that too. Correct? Yeah, they want a lot bigger, more than welcome. Um, that just makes it bigger for whoever wins it. Um, but of course it's not mandatory. So. Right. Right. A little bit. Right. All, and all be determined during the driver's meeting there. If, if they yeah. want to. Yeah. And, and are you still doing the Pee Wees, juniors, you know, the kiddos for, uh, for that weekend? Yes. We always love the Pee Wees. And of course, Pee Wees get to race free. I mean, that's probably my favorite part of the night is watching Pee Wees race. So, <laughs> um, yeah. They race free. They love it. They get their little trophies and stuff, make a big deal out of it. It's great. Yes, we'll have people if we have enough peewees to make the class. You know, I've been to your track quite a few times, as you know, uh, not only there to help you guys just on the weekend when we're not racing, but during the racing. And the, when we talk about the kids, two people come to mind. And I think you know who they are that yeah. I've seen have the most fun. And that was Howard Hack and his little boy and Dan Norman and his little boy. Those two. Like, I think they were more involved. Like, they didn't care about their own stuff they were doing. They had so – I don't know how many times those kids went down that track. It was hilarious. <laughs> Phil loved it. Yeah. Little Phil oh, was Phil having Foreman a ball. Loved it. I mean, and he I'm sorry. It. I cannot remember Howard Hack's little boy's name, but he was just boom, 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 just constantly. It was great. They, they had a blast. They well, well, Yeah. Good times. Well, go ahead, Caleb. What's our next question there, bud? Uh, just, you know, you mentioned a little mm -hmm. bit about, like, the rain kind of playing a factor into things. Like, what um, what were some of the challenges you guys um, had with kind of taking over this track? Like you said, you you both really didn't have a ton of experience with sand drag. So what, what was things that kind of surprised you about it? Um, my husband knows, you know, Devin, he knows quite a bit about the drag racing and stuff. I didn't, so it's taken me a lot to learn the lingo, and I cannot tell you how long it took me to learn the difference between 449 and faster and 450 and slower. 
I still don't know what kinds of machines are what. If you tell me it's a 1.5 cc, I have no idea what that means. Um, but if someone explains it to me, I mean, I kind of get the gist of it. And I'm pretty good with the system. So anything that messes up on the system, I'm usually able to fix it pretty well, unless it's just completely shut down, doesn't want to work for the day, which it does do that. But um, it, it takes some getting used to. Um, and everybody's been very patient with me because it does take me a while to, you know, kind of understand what they're talking about whenever they talk about these things. But um, he has more experience than I do, of course. And he's always grown up with ATVs and things like that, cars, things like that. So he knows quite a bit. So he has to teach me along the way. Um, but me, I focus on technology and, of course, making hot dog chili. So <laughs> that's what I know. By the way, uh, Caleb, if you ever get a chance to make it out there or any of you that are watching, they got some really good food there. Uh, it's when I got there and found out they had chili cheese dogs, that was it. That was my favorite track right there. Nothing else matters. <laughs> chili cheese dogs. I, or golden. I do. Or whatever yep. you all call it there. I know everybody calls it something different. Hot dog sauce. Yep. Hot dog hot sauce. sauce. <laughs> I've heard hot dog sauce. They're like, well, I don't know what chili is, but I want hot dog sauce. And I was like, this? <laughs> I'm 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 learning all sorts of things today. <laughs> I'm concerned for the part of the nation that uh that calls it hot dog sauce. That's yeah. That's, well, that's, that's a new one to me. Sauce, like ketchup. What do you What do you mean hot dog sauce? But <laughs> there's people that call it hot dog sauce. That sounds probably, like I, somebody I, I, that doesn't speak English. How they'd be like, I want the the. They're asking for ketchup or mustard. I want the 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 hot dog sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Little meat concoction, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. There are people that call it that, so I've I've had to adapt to that too. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So, so Alyssa, you said that your favorite part is watching the kiddos. Yeah. Um, not to bring up anything bad, but what's the part that you don't like about being an owner of a racetrack? What part is the toughest? Letting our racers down, especially with the weather or when the system just doesn't want to work right or our equipment breaks down and there are times where that happens and sometimes it just can't be fixed and it has to be postponed and I really hate letting everybody down like that because we all love it we love to be there um it's just sometimes things happen and that that's my least favorite part that's an well, easy that's that's a that's a good thing. That shows that you guys got it in your heart to make it work. You know what I mean? We, and, we, want, and it, we want everybody to have a good time. We want to make it fair for everybody. And I really hate when the weather gets in the way. And last year it did really bad. So hopefully this year's a little bit better. Yeah. Well, yeah, we definitely, definitely don't. Uh, for, uh, sorry, go ahead, Dave. We definitely don't use the four-letter word that starts with R. We call it Mother Nature. You know what I mean? We're not allowed to say the four-letter word that starts with R. That's you can't do that. Well, if I, I say, know. what if we get a tornado? Uh, we'll still race. We don't care about tornadoes. <laughs> okay. Because normally, if you're in the eye of the tornado, it's fine. you know, it's yeah. The tower is gone. It's fine. No rain. <laughs> Well, I'll say, Alyssa, I'm glad to hear that that's like, that's your, your biggest um, negative as far as being a trucker. That means that you guys really do care a lot about, about the races, about the putting on races, you know, giving a, a place that people can come, you know, like you said, being able to see, you know, the kids go down the track and everything. Like, I feel like that there, there's, you know, some, some track owners and stuff that have gotten a little jaded, you know, as, as they've owned tracks and stuff. So it's good to see that your guys' biggest concern is still, laying down your racers that's that's really cool to me I that's my biggest thing with anything is letting people down and that's what I try to avoid so anytime something goes wrong at the track I just it makes me feel so bad so I really hope that owning it doesn't ever make us jaded because we really enjoy it we love being there we love all of our race family um it's just a really good time anytime we're all together so Absolutely. And well, we're going to we're going to keep that good weather going. We got to give Alyssa an awesome birthday present with a great event for the full size madness. Speaking of like some cool events that you guys have, um what are some other like key events that you guys are looking forward to for the 2024 season? 
Okay, so next up we have KOI invading us. So we call it KOI invades LSR, Little Sandy Raceway. So um, they actually come in and they put on their 200 foot race and it's their system, it's their rules. They're, they're just hosting in our track because they usually host at fair races and things. So they're just coming and hosting on our track. And last year it was really awesome and I didn't have to sit in the tower. So I got to enjoy it. I got to go around and mingle and talk with all my people. And um, I actually got to watch the race, not focus on <laughs> system so it it was a really good time for me and this year they'll be there for two days so they'll be there may 17th and 18th so i get to enjoy it both days um not having to fight with my system not having to worry about letting people down so i'm really excited for that one um we've also got summer nationals so we put on a big um, fireworks show we have bouncy houses and um i think last year we had a snow cone truck so i mean it was it was a lot of fun Dave was at that one. Um, we oh, had yeah. post- the fireworks. The fireworks are awesome. I mean, fifteen minutes worth of fireworks. So it was wow, or longer. I mean, it. Dave went overboard with the fireworks, but <laughs> um, he loves fireworks. That's what he likes to do. So um, we had bouncy houses for the kids. We had the fireworks show, and that was supposed to be our summer nationals and our side by side shootout with Dave. And the rain knocked it out, so we had to do it in August. Um, so, like I said, the rain bothered us really bad last year. Um, so, hopefully not this year. Um, so, we've got that. We've got fall nationals, too. And then I, last year, it was a really big hit. So, I'm really excited for this year, too, was um, the Halloween bash. So, we do trunk or treat, and we do a costume contest, and all of our little our little peewees come out with their costumes on, and they race and um, do trunk or treat. So that was a lot of fun last year. Um, I'm really excited for that one too. I'm just excited for the whole year. <laughs> and actually being able to have the events. <laughs> yes. Um, we want to have the events on the days that we plan them. Yes. Well, that's cool. It sounds like you guys are doing like a lot on top of the actual racing too. You're trying to make it, you know, a family community event. And I think that's, that's really cool. Having the fireworks, the trunk or treat, all that, yeah. like, that's a great way, especially to get the kids out there, you know, because, yeah. like you say, kids are the best part of racing, and, you know, get them involved when they're young, they want to do it when they're older. Oh, yes, and there's a lot of them who grew up at that track, and they still come to the track, so we really love being able to keep families there, make families happy. That's where they like to come. <clears throat> Dave, yeah. what is your favorite, being, being that you have been to Little Sandy uh, quite a few times now, What's your favorite thing about the track? The track is beautiful. Like it's the setting when you get there, uh, it's to the left is a lot of trees. So the racers can get under the trees and have some room. Me and Devin last year went out there on a weekend and we cut some tree limbs down for the taller trailers and, and whatnot. Um, and which makes it nice for the shade. There's bleachers on both sides. There's a little kids park. It's got a bunch of toys and stuff for the kids and some like pea gravel. So, and it's in a, uh, uh, it's away from the track, but close enough the kids can watch, but there's, you know, fence and stuff around it. Um, so the parents can like, Hey, you know, the kids are safe. Um, the, you know, Devin and Alyssa is the ones that make it worthwhile. You know what I mean? Um, uh, that's, I don't, you just got to be there. It's just so, it's such a pretty track. That's what I was saying. It was on the hill, on the side with the trees on the left side, there's a big hill and it's an old farmhouse or something up there. And it, it just, it's just really neat. And it's down in a valley. Um, so it, it's, it's really, you get a really good sounding ride out there. You can hear it echoing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. It's really cool. Um, yeah, the, the people down there, Gizmo and Bob, uh, you know, the followways, I can't think of all of them. Man, these guys are just, they just love the race. And what we need to do, Alyssa, is we need to get Gizmo's video to Caleb to put on there. Oh, goodness. Caleb, I will send that to you on Messenger. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, so, yeah. We'll, we'll drop in an episode here. New PA system. We got a new PA system last year. And I can play music during the races and stuff and all that. But my microphone, you can actually hear me speak. So Gizmo just thought that was the best thing ever. So I had, I think it was Bluegrass playing over the speaker at the time. So he took my microphone 
and decided to sing his own little remix of a grass song about racing. So I will send that to you because it, I mean, it sounds like he's rehearsed it several times. It, it <laughs> sang it for everybody, just had the best time. And uh, that was priceless. Yeah. yeah. We, definitely need to get, <laughs> we need to get this on the podcast, like part of our interview here. And <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There. We'll drop it in here. Song. Yeah. Yeah, for Perfect. sure. For sure. Yeah. They, uh, but yeah, the track's fantastic. Um, uh, it, it has, you know, they got into a spot there. They had, a, you know, were because of Mother Nature, it made it really tough on Devin to get the track right. Um, but uh, this year, I just seen the pictures, what they've been doing the last few weekends, and it looks fantastic. I cannot wait to get there because I will be heading there Thursday. So I'm heading there this Thursday and go up there for the uh, the madness and see what happens and then be back hopefully be sometime before that and then for my race at your guys' track as well. So in September so definitely Seems lots like of cool events what? I'm sorry uh, Alyssa go ahead yeah. go ahead Alyssa sorry. I'm sorry I said it's in September it seems like forever away but it'll be here before we know it yep I'm just monologuing <laughs> <laughs> so I do have one more question for you uh, before Caleb jumps into the next one we know Devin's there we know he's in the background and that's okay. But can you tell us a little bit about what Devin does at the track? We've talked about you. So what part does Devin do? I know what he does, but let's kind of go on about what he goes through, if you would. And the guys that help him as well. Yeah. Yeah. So he runs all the equipment. He makes sure the track is in good shape. He um, runs the tractors. He runs the water truck. I mean, keeps it great. After every so many passes, he runs the tractor and then he keeps water on it to make sure that everybody has, you know, a smooth track and it's not dusty. He also runs the water all over the place just to keep it from bringing up so much dust because when it's dry in the summer, it it gets pretty rough out there. But um, he makes sure that the system's working good downstairs, so mine upstairs will work good. Um, and that system is very, very finicky. So it takes a lot of patience to be able to um, make sure it's working well. But um, he, bless his heart, and he runs himself to death. I mean, running all over the place. We've, we've got a little LTA that um, is our pit bike. <laughs> so that's, that's what we're running around on all the time is that little LTA. But um, yeah, he's, he's the reason it goes so smooth. He's the one that keeps it running. I mean, besides me, but. <laughs> and and you have uh weston that's helping you this year i hear right mr weston our nephew weston he will be helping us this year run the tractors he actually got some practice in um this past weekend he was playing around on the tractor and he said man i love this tractor and i said honey you run it run that tractor. <laughs> <laughs> take care of it buddy so uh and actually one of devin's um blogging employees is helping us too supposed to help us out too so That'll make it a little easier on Devin. He might be able to get a break every once in a while. So that'll be really good. Maybe he can enjoy it some too. Now you said logging. Um, real quick, can you tell us what you mean by logging? Tell us what you guys do there. So Devin owns a logging business. So he cuts timber and sells timber. So very dangerous. And he actually broke his back back in 2017. So he's, He's full of hardware and is in some pain sometimes probably, but um, still works very hard, works very hard every day, both with logging and with the track. So he's, he's a hard worker. That's for sure. But yeah, that's he, definitely dangerous work there. Yeah. Yeah. Very physical job. <laughs> 2017, February of 2017, he got hit by a tree and broke his back. So we were in the hospital for a week. And he was supposed to be in a back brace for three months. He decided one month was enough and he went back to work. So um, logging, of course. So he's he's a tough little kid. I will say that. <laughs> he's a tough kid. Well, let's hope that he could definitely get some, some help there, like you're saying, with the tractors more frequently. Give himself a break. Sounds like he definitely has earned it. We can always depend on Weston. He's always there to help. He's been he went all this weekend. 
And I'll tell you what, Caleb, I've, I've been there, as you know, you know, quite a few times, a lot, actually. And um, you'd be surprised when people see that Devin is, you know, he's trying his best to get it going. Racers will actually jump in. Tobin Javin jumped on a tractor one night and said, hey, I got you and kept help. Devin was so wore out. He was like, huh? And uh, so the racers will even jump in and help as well. I've jumped on the water truck. I mean, we we all pitch in. You know, guys got to remember it's a, it's new to them. They're new to it. They're learning. They're doing the best they can to give us all a good, safe place to race. And um, it's it's a big expense for them. And they're just they're they're working sure. to the right direction. It's just going to take some time. It doesn't happen overnight. And you, I know you, also you've been saying a, a lot having issues with the like the timing system. That wouldn't happen to be a Race America system, would it? No. It's not a Race America it's system. Not. Okay. Okay. No. Interesting. I don't want to name it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna name it. <laughs> I was just saying we, you know, we've seen Race America systems, West Coast, Mid America. And they seem to be usually the culprit of a lot of those those issues. Um, it's it's not limited just to that system. I would say gotcha. that. Enough uh, said. Enough said. They all, they all have problems, apparently. They do. And you know what? I always tell people. You're you're putting electrical systems with dirt and water. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. It doesn't make much sense, but you know, seems like a lot of the issues on my end are just from maybe I just didn't hold my mouth right, and it just decided it didn't want to work for me that day. Um, that happens too. So it's just really picky. And it's it's an older system. It's been there for a while. So, yeah. uh, I I don't think so. It's only been there for three or four years. It's really oh, really yeah. Uh, I'll know okay. it's relatively new. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what that that makes it worse. Yeah. So if well, anybody yeah, has a good lead on a on you know a good used system somewhere. Where can they where can they find you guys at? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, to... <laughs> no, that's a good point though. Um, what Caleb just said. Uh, where can they find you guys at? Facebook website. What do you guys got? I've phone got numbers. Facebook and TikTok, and I actually made business cards that have my phone number on it. Um, I'm the one that you need to contact because Devin's frequently in and out of service, so he's pretty difficult to get in touch with. But I'm not so bad. So um, my phone number is always out there. Um, we've got a Facebook page where I post our schedule every single time we're planning on racing. Um, I try to put all important information out there. That way everybody can stay up to date. And I make TikToks after every single race. So I always try to get Devin to take videos for me because I can't take very good ones from the tower. So um, now we have a drone, actually. So I only crashed it four times this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to get kind of good with that and I can get videos myself. But otherwise, I'm on the walkie-talkie. Devin gets some videos. Devin, take me some videos. And he'll get me some videos and I'll use those to make TikToks and trying to keep, you know, trying to keep interest and showing people, oh, especially TikTok, because that's where everybody's at now, um, trying to show everybody on TikTok what it is and hopefully get some more people out. So, so cool. Caleb, there is a little something that people probably should know about little Sandy. Um, Devin is a talker like me. So one thing you'll hear at little Sandy quite often is Devin, get on the tractor. And he's like, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> so we were, we were actually going to have Murray power sports make t-shirts that was going to say little Sandy on the front and on the back, Devin, get on the tractor or something like that. <laughs> oh my God. We was, and we still might do that. We really need. <laughs> Which we have the few months of experience knowing, hey, Dave, and get on the tractor. <laughs> so. I think, I think uh, Dave, maybe uh, all the winners should get uh, a Devin get on the tractor t-shirt. There you go. There you go. <laughs> He's probably in there. What? <laughs> well, Caleb, uh, go right ahead. Yep. Yeah. So um, we're going to get into kind of our, our last question here um, real quick, Alyssa. 
Um, we're doing something a little new. We're doing our last qu question. It's going to be sponsored by Lone Star Graphics. Lone Star Graphics is a great uh, bunch of people. They go out on site, uh, take photos of all of your you know, race bikes, your cars, everything. They've got on site printing op options. They can do photos, they do plaques, t shirts, totes, mugs, you name it. You can check them out at lonestargraphics.info. They've got an archive of all of their photos going all the way back till 2006. So any of your favorite racers or memories throughout the years, any of the events that they've been at, you can go and purchase photos or any of those items listed. Again, at lonestargraphics.info. Um, listen, we're just going to kind of wrap up this interview with what your guys' plans are for the future for Little Sandy Raceway. So maybe maybe a timing system but any track upgrades anything maybe events that you guys are wanting to have um tell us a little bit about what you guys want to do we would really love to be able to bring everybody in especially the people because we've got lots of trails local we would love to bring in people who are on the trails so that way they can come experience drag racing see what it's like because they love riding the trails maybe they'll love drag racing um like i said earlier we got a drone so hopefully i'll get a little bit better at that and i can kind of up my TikToking skills. Um, but I do try, I'm going to try to use more of a social media presence. That way it can kind of get the name out there because it's, that seems to be the way to get in contact with everybody now. Um, and of course we just upgraded a big thing on the tractor. So lots of equipment upgrades are coming. Um, not going to be very obvious at first, but hopefully the, the track will show and speak for itself. Awesome. Definitely a, a very cool facility. Lots of history there. Lots of cool events have been there in the past, and you guys are bringing some new exciting things, and we can't wait to, to see how things work out. So once again, the Full Size Madness, this coming weekend, if you guys have a, a truck, a buggy, a side-by-side, -side, an ATV still, come on out to the Full Size Madness this weekend. Thank you uh, to Dave, as well as Alyssa, for joining in, and uh, we'll see you guys uh, a little bit later. Definitely check in with you more often. Thanks, Alyssa. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, we're back once again. Thank you very much to Alyssa for taking a little bit of time with us on her birthday, of all things, to chat about Little Sandy Raceway. Here's Isaac with another ad read. Hey, so this episode of Panel Talk brought to you again by Racing in the Dirt. Cleveland, Wisconsin is a home base for Racing in the Dirt shop. Uh, everything from turnkey cars to components, cut tires, paddle tires, wheels, you name it, racinginthedirt.com. Get you guys hooked up and get ready for the upcoming race season. It's going to be here before you know it, racinginthedirt.com. Absolutely. Also, another shout out to Lisa. We forgot to mention this, but she's getting her master's. Um, she'll be getting that very soon here. So congratulations to Lisa. Birthday and her master's. Pretty cool for her. Um, we're going to go and jump in and talk a little bit about uh, one of their upcoming races this weekend, the Full Size Madness. So I know, Damien, you're actually planning on attending this race, right? Oh, yeah. We're working on getting the Jeep and everything ready to go. Just finished changing the oil today. Got all the nitrous and everything. Now I just got to go get fuel and nitrous to go down there. Going to aim to hope, depending on who all shows up, might try and make the quick eight on Friday night. Yeah, so this is going to be the first race that they've had in quite some time having full-size vehicles at the track. Not since probably the PTN days, right? No, they they had a, they've had a few races here and there, but nothing really large. They've just kind of said, "Oh, hey, if you guys come down, we'll let you have a class to run with." Gotcha. It's not really been big there lately. Um, years ago, there was a sister track and just across the border, state line border into West Virginia that went to asphalt and then almost all the cars that were running there switched to pavement racing. Gotcha. So Damien, that uh, little Sandy was pretty much a staple back in the Azro days, weren't they? Oh, definitely. We would go there two or three times a year. And it always one of the neater tracks. My, my biggest memory going down there other than racing my own little junior dragster is, as a little kid watching my dad and Tom Hartman go wheels up side by side and first round of comp class down there. Definitely a lot of history of the track. Dave was telling us about like how beautiful it is down there too. Just the facilities oh, are super cool. 
Fantastic. It is a gorgeous backdrop. You're down in the holler, down in the woods, mount, hillsides all around you just covered in woods. Just be wary about going up in them woods if you do. <laughs> I could imagine. I know uh, Isaac, back in the day, PTN, big staple there. Um, what do you think about them trying to put a, more of a concerted effort in getting you know trucks and dragsters and stuff back out to the track? You know, I'll say this. Whenever we ran PTN there, we always had a very good turnout, uh, good quality cars. You know, lots of guys from Michigan still talk about going down there. So good to see that again. Um, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's it's really good. Good for the sport and good for the track. I hope it goes really well this weekend. And, uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to, you know, footage and results uh, coming from Damien next week. So. Damien and, and we'll have Dave Applegate there. So we'll, they'll tag team some coverage for us, get some live feeds some photos and all that. Um, Damien, um, as far as the race format, they've got um, bracket racing um, as well as those quick eight classes. So tell us a little bit about like the bracket classes. Well, their bracket classes, they've got them set at a hard split of 459 and faster, 460 and slower. So it, it's going, it, I'm, not sure how evenly sized the classes are going to be, all depending on who and how many cars show up. They've, at the end of the night, they're going to have something that you don't really see too often in the sport anymore. They're going to have the fast and slow class winners actually race for a little bit extra cash prize as well. Yeah, so they're that's going to be kind of like a grudge match. Um, and that extra bonus money, I know uh, the Speeders organization, as well as Little Sandy, putting some money into those pots. That's pretty cool just to see. I mean, we've seen sometimes where we see kind of a fast versus slow class kind of like grudge match, but this is something that's a little bit more official. Is that something yeah, that absolutely. you're uh, hoping to take there, Damien? Hey, first I got to get down to the front. First I got to win a class. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know several tough racers that are planning to go. that are always contenders here in the Franklin County area. And I know that they're they're doing that for both the full size, which is going to be your trucks, your buggies, your dragsters. The side by sides are going to be in that class. They're still having their normal ATV crowd that we typically see there. They are also doing the same thing with their bracket classes. Same split that four forty nine that four and faster four fifty and slower. Um, yep. With They're the having same their own quick eight as well Friday night. Quick eights too as well. So so and this quick eights that's a free entry fee deal, correct? Yes, you have to pay for the testing tune. That's a twenty five dollar testing tune down there. It, it starts off a late. The only downside I see the they're starting the testing tune around six o'clock, and the eliminations for the quick eight classes will start around nine thirty. Gotcha. So just a little bit of time in between there, but um. I think it's cool seeing a free entry fee thing. I mean, Isaac, we typically don't see that in, in sand drag. So like, do you think that's going to be a benefit for them for this, this so, uh, coming weekend? So we actually do that with pro truck elite, uh, kind of same setup. As long as you pay and you've got a slip from making a pass during, uh, the test and tune during the day, fastest eight of the day, you know, as long as you meet the pro truck elite it rules, you know, it's free entry fee and you know, yeah. So, yeah, but I think it's great. I think it gives guys an extra incentive to run the test and tune, which means a little bit more money to the track, which is good. Uh, you know, we need to support our tracks. I mean, we can't really afford to lose a whole lot more. <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, that's, you know, I, I, I love it. I, I think it's great. I mean, and right, where can you start complaining if you've got a class that's literally – a free entry for you because you're probably going to want to make a couple tests and tune hits anyway. Why not step up to the plate for 20? Basically just use, you know, the entry fee, quote unquote. Um, you look at what you pay to get in that class anyway, 25 bucks seems pretty reasonable to try to get in that class and maybe you could get three or four, you know, test hits out of it. So I see it as a win-win all the way around. Hey, you know what? Kudos to little Sandy. Think outside the box. Try something yeah. a little different, you know, from what they're normal to, and see if it takes off. So, good totally. job for them. And Damien, what what do you know what the test and tune fee is? Um, twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. So you could potentially take twenty five dollars, and if you're one of the fastest eight vehicles, either the car side or the ATV side, you could turn that into two hundred bucks because they're paying out 
$200 to the first place of both the quick eights and, and also $200 to the first place of those grudge matches between the fast and slow brackets. Correct. So definitely something that, you know, I think is pretty cool. I definitely wish I lived closer to this. Um, this sounds like it's going to be a really cool event. Um, hopefully we could see, you know, re- like you said, a really good turnout. They're definitely trying some different things. Speaking with Alyssa and stuff, her and Devin really trying to make this, you know, all about the racers, you know, making it, um, you know, just put on a good event for them. And uh, oh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're looking forward to actually being able to get some events in. They had a big struggle with, you know, Mother Nature last year. Damien, how's your forecast look for this weekend down there? Um, last time I looked, there's a little bit of rains, only about. Yeah, don't, don't say that word. Don't say that word. Yeah. <laughs> Seventy. It said seventy-five percent chance, but it's only like a shower, ten, two tenths of an inch rain over the whole day. So, yeah. in all honesty, that ended up probably helping the track more than hurting. And then sure. Saturday's looking to be low or high seventies, low eighties, probably sixties at night. Wow, that sounds good. Nice. That's good racing weather. Exactly. Yeah. Well, give Alyssa a good birthday weekend. Um, show up to the full size madness, guys. Um, Isaac, you really touched on something about supporting tracks. Um, tracks closing down. That's something that you know we definitely have seen. Damien, I know um, in your neck of the woods with uh, Franklin County four wheelers had a bit of an increase for some of the gate fees um, and entry fees and stuff. Um, not tremendously huge. Um, especially when we think about a lot of these tracks that have been around as long as Brookville has, uh, it's honestly surprising that fees haven't increased more over the years. Um, it's only five dollar increase. Is that correct? Yeah, five dollar increase for the entry fee, five dollar increase for the gate fee, and like you said, this is an area that's really been kind of the stalwart for keeping the fees entry fees and whatnot down low but it's starting to get to a point where the cost of putting the races on are getting higher the people are wanting more money from the purses so they're just going to bump that up that little bit to just try and help both of those out because really when you look at it cleves and brookville our entry fees are damn near half of what they're they are up in michigan or a whole lot less than what you guys deal with out in california for sure. I mean, you know, part of it is just things have gotten so expensive to put on these races in just the past few years. I mean, we we all, you know, we feel the pain of the pump. We feel the pain, you know, getting groceries, utilities, everything. Think about the fact that the tracks are going through the same thing. You know, oh, totally. it, it, it's, it doesn't suddenly there's tr- a sand drag track is not some magical place where prices have stayed the same since the, the track was open. You know, things go up, things get more expensive. So kind of the point is just it's if you're seeing, you know, reasonable increases like that, five dollars, that's right. not a terrible increase, especially. I mean, how long has Brookville been open? It's been open since. I honestly couldn't tell you. I know it's been since the 90s. 80s, but they've been 80s. So Franklin, K- Franklin County has been racing there since the 80s. I know of I've, I've heard some wild stories from the past to trucks with throttles hanging and they would used to let par- cars park at the fence at the end of the track and a blazer ending up on top of a grand torino Ooh. <laughs> so not it, my so... how times have changed <laughs> <laughs> yes yes thankfully <laughs> thankfully so but you know thinking about like entry fees probably being the same for your gate fees since that track's been open or right. thereabouts at least you know so um, another thing you know, we Since saw. I was a little kid. It's been the same, and that's yeah. been a while. <laughs> that's a long time, right? 20, I mean, just about twenty years. <laughs> you know, I mean, like Isaac. I know that um, up in your neck of the woods with Silverback. I know that uh, the Nooners kind of got a little flack with changing some entry fees, and things got adjusted back down to there about where they used to be. Um, you know. Obviously, with Pro Truck Elite, that's, you know, a free entry fee class. But, I mean, what do you think about, like, people kind of griping about a, a small increase, especially, like, you're seeing that $5 increase with? So, it, it seems like, and it hasn't been as bad lately, but it seems like, you know, um, some folks out there want to race for free 
and they want to hit a 50 grand payday like you do at spring fling, you know, at the end of the night. And that's just not realistic. I mean, let's face it. Um, you know, nothing's gotten cheaper as a track owner. You know, you think of food in the concession stand, even you think of even your health. I mean, let's face it, folks. Nobody that works at the track should have to do it for free. Okay. They may like watching our stuff go down the track, but nobody wants to volunteer their weekend just to make your weekend a good time. Okay. Now there may be a couple, I get it, but it, all in all, those people deserve a little bit of compensation as well. At least some, you know, a reasonable amount. Um, oh, totally. So, you know, you look at that insurance is something a lot of people don't think about. I can tell you that I know uh, from talking to a couple of guys, they're talking insurance has gone up in the last five years, anywhere from I've heard 25 to almost 40%. That is a lot of money to yep. have a race. And it helps explain why, you know, if a lot of us out there saw, you know, a guy making a ride on the back of, uh, of, uh, JJ old heavy down there. Right. And you know, um, you know, they were kind of defensive about that and, uh, oh, you know, putting on a show and everything else. The problem is some guy, some insurance adjuster sees that he doesn't care if you're putting out a show, all he sees is a claim waiting to happen. You know? Exactly. So it, it's, I, I think we, you know, if you take a step back for just 30 seconds and actually think about it, it makes a lot of sense that some of these places are going to have to raise some prices. It just is what it is. And to go off and start raising a ruckus before the season's really even started at a tested tune is just a bad look. I'll just say it like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially at <clears throat> testing tunes. Um, you know, it's just like, look, the, here's what I always say. I tell people this is, you know, more towards the spectator side of things, right? The racers, we understand. Sometimes we think, hey, we're the ones putting on the show. We shouldn't have to fund this. But you look at it from the spectator side of things. For me to go down to a movie or to go get a meal at McDonald's now, I'm going to spend dang near $15 for a meal at McDonald's, Okay. That's a California. I don't, know, I don't know what it's for you guys, you know, but just to go and get a burger, okay, it's going to be $15 in a lot of different places. Now, if you're looking at spending that same amount of money for an entire day at a racetrack, 20 minute McDonald's meal, entire day for racing at a racetrack. What, what, like, that just blows my mind that people have an issue with that. You know, you look at movie prices too. Isaac, when's the last time you went to a movie and spent anything close to what you know an entry fee for a spectator fee is uh to be fair you know and now i'm obviously a little older so the wife and i have been out on a couple of dates lately and if you hit the uh prior to 6 p.m movie you can usually get it in for like <laughs> 750 you know two of you for like 15 bucks you know but by the time but by the time you buy popcorn and you know a couple of drinks and stuff you're easily pushing the $25, $30 range, even going on those bargain parts. So I agree. I mean, and let's face it, you get some steps in while you're at the racetrack. That's way better for you than McDonald's anyway. You know, <laughs> I mean, we're not talking car, you know, gourmet, like in and out or something like that. It's a whole different conversation we can have, sure. but you know, let's face it, it. It's, it's just a bad look this early in the year. I, I'll just yeah. I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'm all for it if, if promoters and, and track owners and stuff are going completely out of their minds with price increases. That's one thing. You know, we're looking at a $5 increase. We're looking at, you know, paying a gate fee to get into a test and tune event. These little things where, guys, just, you know, if, if it really hurts you that much, if you can't do it, maybe racing's not the best thing for you. You're probably spending a little bit more money on your race car. Then you are at your gate fee. Um, and, and if you can't go to Spectre, that's fine. That's why you come to World Sandrag News to get all of your Sandrag news. Can't go mm -hmm. to the track? Come to us. You can watch some live streams, get some race results. That's what we're here for. Well said. 
Yes. Um, I would be remiss uh, to not bring up um, a pretty funny thing that I heard this past weekend. So speaking of Tess and Tunes, Thunder Valley had their second, third Tess and Tune of the year. Um, our very own Billy Teeters did a little bit of racing himself on his mini bike. Um, did a little bit of grudge racing against a 10 year old on an ATV. And um, I heard that this 10 year old may have uh, beat up on Billy a little bit, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually try to call Billy here and uh, see if he can't tell us a little bit more about what exactly happened. Because um, let's just face this, folks. Okay. A 10 year old, I believe, beat Billy out two out of three. Woo! Just completely smashed him. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac, when's the last time you've uh, gotten crushed by a 10 year old? And the sand drags. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's been a while. In <laughs> fact, I'm gonna go with never. So Ooh. let's see, let's see what Billy has to say about this. <laughs> that takes me back to when we did a similar race with Sidra when I was a little kid out at Liberty one night. We had the adults running their pit big kids and their juniors. <laughs> Billy, you are live yes. on Paddle Talk. Episode 16. Oh, Can you guys hear him okay? Oh, yeah. Yep. So, Billy, um, we uh, we heard that you may have gotten beat up a little bit by a 10-year-old at the racetrack this past weekend. Hey, that, that, that. This is unnecessary. <laughs> this, this phone call feels very unnecessary. But if you must know, yes, it took me three tries to beat it. Three a tries. <laughs> yeah. It took me three tries to beat a ten year old. And grudge bracket racing. <laughs> I mean, if he was racing a ten year old out here, he probably wouldn't so, have beat any of them tries. <laughs> all race, we go up, and you know, I'm racing my handy dandy mini bike. It's it's all reliable at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm racing against Riker Ballard. If you know Riker Ballard, he's a great kid. He uh Races this KFX 700, a bunch of souped up stuff done, done to it. It's really awesome. Right, Riker Ballard? Ballard. Riker Ballard. Yeah. Ballard. And uh, so I dial in a 1060 on my mini bike, and he dials in a 530. And well, oh. he breaks out and runs a 526. Problem is, I also broke out and ran a 972. Oh. And then second pass, we're doing it again. He dials in a 520. I dial in a 970. He cuts a double on nine reaction time. Uh -huh. he, runs a five, he, he runs a 526 on a 520. And I, um, I I broke out again. I'm at 939 on a 970. What are you doing, Billy? What are you bringing up by four tenths? I don't understand. Because I, it's, yeah, it was it was a tricky situation that day. <laughs> but anyway, so on the third and final day, and by the way, shout out to Riker Ballard, ten years old, getting double oh nine reaction time. That's really good. yeah, right. <laughs> final pass comes up, and I'm looking for the time slip. Okay, here it is. Final pass comes up. He changes his dial into a 525 because he just ran two 526s in a row. And I changed my dial into a 918. I'm going all out. I said, I'm going to dial a 918. And he ends up breaking out. Runs a 518 with a 7 at 55.5 9 miles an hour, which is actually his quickest and fastest pass ever. So shout out to Riker Ballard. Nice. For getting his fastest pass ever. Um, I cut a double up one reaction time and run a 925 with a three. And Wait, I you were double O one? So yeah, it took me three tries to uh, bring out now, my ultimate best on a 10 year old. What, what we're but, not uh, hearing here is he had to stand on the five race. I, I sure showed him who was the boss. I'm trying to see if they can hear you here. I got this for my internal speakers. Can you guys can hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah, no, we're good. No, it's not letting me. But, Hold on, I'm gonna. Now, I'm now going Billy, to. Uh, 
Was your, Translate was your son for, over there that, yelling at here. you when to leave on that last pass? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I he cannot hear you guys, so we gotta get, uh, I gotta translate for him. So what was that, Damien? I was saying now was his son on the sidelines yelling at him to go like his like our dad did for us when we were little. <laughs> yeah, was was Caden over there, Billy, uh yelling at you? So say go, 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 dad. <laughs> he was actually totally in the lead. Like he would he was <laughs> for the tree to drop. As the tree would drop, and the second yellow would come off, and he yelled, "Go!" Go! And I would just go. Yeah. That's what I have to do. Oh my goodness! Uh, and and now you got the mini bike world record for a sand drags. No. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. We're not putting a mini bike record. Stop sending us mini bike slips. <laughs> we're not, yeah, we're not doing mini bike records. That's what Junior Dirt Drags is, though. So if you're 15 and younger, you can definitely send your time slips to them. There you go. But even then, our mini bike's not that fast because that kid in Albany, I think it's Seavers, Andy Seavers' kid, who ran like an unbelievable number on the mini bike. He ran like a six. 80-something. Oh, was, my goodness. I, I am so fast on a mini-bike. <laughs> wow. Well, double, double one in, in the final round there. About time. You probably were sleeping on the light. You notice, you guys, you did not tell us the reaction times to the other two passes. Yeah, I, I, I lost the time slip to you. Oh, okay. Oh, I lost the time slip. Shut up. When I broke out. The second time, I had a 165 to his 009. And that our first actual race, I don't know where it's at. I will find it. Maybe. Okay, guys, we're gonna, we're gonna hold Billy to uh, to this. He's gonna put up the time slips here, so you guys can see. You can laugh at him for two and give him a little bit of pat on the back for double or one. I will be a honorable man and put my time slips on there. There we go. I don't know how many of you guys will be that honorable and do the same thing. I, I don't know. It depends. I haven't lost to a 10 year old in a while, so. Oh! Well, I lost to one twice on Saturday. <laughs> and I feel humbled now. So, I can go on the rest of my race season knowing that I have nothing else to be ashamed of. I'm going to be just. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Billy, for taking the phone call, giving us a little little insight to you, some racing. I'm glad you had uh, fun. Shout out to Riker for kicking your butt. Sounds like he's going to have to do that a few more times. Yeah, so I'm going to have to challenge him again. I'm going to have to call him out for the first round of Pro 2 on our first race on May 4th. So. There we go. May 4th. So you guys be there for the rematch between Billy Teeters and Riker Ballard. He's going down. <laughs> Pay per view. All right, Billy. Thank you, man. All right, Caleb. Talk to you later. Yeah. Bye. Now, I hear. Here's an idea for you guys for PTN. Kids versus the adults in their pit vehicles. Kids in their junior dragsters, whatever they want to run. The adults on the pit vehicles. Ooh. I'm not ruling it out. I'm not ruling <laughs> it out. You know I what mean, I was did... thinking, though, is maybe as a uh, WSDN staff, maybe we'll have to uh, do some bounty stuff through the year. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, we could, we could throw up a uh, decal, you know, if uh, somebody takes Billy out at the next race, you know, something like that. Yeah, he definitely have to put one on K-Dub a few times. Maybe on John. <laughs> oh, is that a little little uh, little revenge from <laughs> last weekend, Damien? <laughs> Woo! That was an entertaining one, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, I'm getting a little spicy. He's taking everybody on. Yeah, he's calling everybody out there, up, especially up there in Michigan. Mm-hmm. He didn't mention you, though, Isaac. I, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. You know, I, I don't know what to say there. I, It is what it is. <laughs> you well, we'll have to, to get see back to the plenty, more of those, plenty more of those matchups to come. Um, we're going to go and wrap it up, folks. Thank you guys again for joining us. Um, on behalf of myself, Damian Barris, Isaac DeHaan, this has been Paddle Talk, and we'll see you guys next week. So long, everybody.